Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming to the first presentation of our Career Development Week. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. I've got 12 around the dot, and um, we're going to make sure that everybody has plenty of time for questions. And I think Jeff has a couple of uh, things he wants to interact with you, so I want to give him plenty of time to do that. Um, but let me introduce our speaker for you today. Um, uh, Jeff Green is a, uh, going to be conducting our workshop, Resume 101. Uh, he is a talent acquisition uh, specialist with Enterprise. 
Uh, he is also a UC graduate. He graduated in May of 2013 from the Business Administration program, a uh, four-year football player. So um, uh, we've got one of our, our very uh, much valued alums back to share with you some of his experiences the, that he's had since graduating from UC. So uh, please give a warm welcome to Jeff Green. Yes, as, as Travis said on his warm welcome, I, I am an alumni of this school. Um, I just graduated about three and a half years ago, and I actually spoke to a class last week kind of about that transitional period. You know, what do you do? It's, it's time to get ready for the real world. And college was great. You know, some of us probably wish we could stay here forever. I know I did. But um, when push comes to shove, you do have to graduate, and you got to kind of prove what the fruit of your labors are going to be. And that's going to be a job. That's why we're here, right? You're trying to get an education to further your career and, and get into something after school. So, um, as you said, I went to school, graduated in May of 2013. I played football for four years. Love it. Love every minute of it. Um, until my final, final semester in college, I just really didn't know what I wanted to do. I wanted to coach football, but, you know, unfortunately, that just wasn't really an option for me. So, I met a recruiter for Enterprise um, at a career fair, probably about a month before graduation. So, that's, I really waited until the wire. Um, and luckily for me, things worked out. I got a job, um, took it, ran with it, never, never settled, and, and now I'm in this position that I love with this company. Um, but as we go through this PowerPoint, this presentation about building your resume, I am going to encourage you guys to the same challenge I challenged the class last week. If you don't know what you want to do after college, think about it. Try to really just get an idea of what field you want to work in, what kind of work you want to do. Maybe it's in your major, maybe it's not. There's a lot of different options. But the quicker you can decide or get an idea of what you want to do, is the quicker you're going to be able to find out what work is going to help you to get to that goal. What are you going to be able to put on your resume that's going to make employers look at you and say, this is the kind of person we want to hire? So let's talk about resumes. Now, throughout this presentation, I'm going to ask that you guys interact. And I actually have surprises, or well, just prizes, to give those who answer questions correctly or interact with me. So keep that in mind. I think you guys will like my prizes. So we're going to start things off with a little pop quiz. Very simple pop quiz, if you will. But if you answer the question correctly, you do get a prize. So the purpose of a resume is to get a job or get an interview. Raise your hand if you want to answer. Nobody wants to answer. Yes, B. B, to get an interview. That is correct. Now, do you want a hat, sunglasses? I've got a water bottle. Wow. And also, I have another prize that um, is a glasses cleaning kit. It's my favorite product that I have, so just keep that in mind as well. So, yes, obviously, a resume is not going to get you a job, but it will get you in the interview. And that's a whole other animal, right? You've got to prepare for the interview and do a lot of things. Um, that are going to ensure that you get that job. But I will say that a resume, and I'll, I'm going to read a lot of these slides, go over some things, and then I'm going to tell you kind of from a recruiter standpoint, from somebody within a company who's the first person to view an application and a resume, some things that are really going to create almost biases on my end. Things that I don't want to admit to being biased about, but if I see some things on a resume, I'm really going to like you before you even step in the office, or I'm going to have some questions that I need you to answer and answer you know, well before I kind of get over that bias. So just remember that. True or false? My resume needs to be eye-catching. I should use neon orange paper, big fonts, and pictures of myself. Yes. False. That is false. That, that is that is correct. Um, although I would get a laugh out of that if I saw you know a neon purple resume, I probably wouldn't take that person too seriously. So, sunglasses, hat, glasses, cleaning kit. What do you want? Uh, I'll sunglasses. sunglasses. Very good. And it will tickle me to death if I one day walk around this campus to see you wearing these sunglasses. So yeah, that's not what we're looking for. That, that's not really professional, right? We don't want to see crazy pictures and colors and all these things. You know, most businesses are all going to look for really conservative styles, not only in your resume, but in your dress and in a lot of uh, different areas. So that's always been my opinion, playing the safest for the best. Um, but again, it's, it's really about the content. It's, it's not about how thick that content is or flashy it looks. It's about when we read it, is it something that we can apply to the job we're going to fill? The average resume review is, and this one's not easy, so who wants to take a stab at it? Yes. That is incorrect. 30 seconds. I like it. That is true. Guys, I'll be honest. When I'm looking over a resume, I look at the bullet points. I see if there's applicable experience. I also look really quickly at their um, objective or kind of their, you know, 
based on a cover letter within the resume, so not your cover letter, but what your career goals are. I read all that stuff, and either I love it and I remember that, or I don't love it. And again, before I interview you, I'm going to probably ask you some questions, and the reason is some of the stuff I did or did not see on your resume. So 30 seconds, I usually put it down, and that's why clear, concise, to the point, and accurate what you've done. So, Cody. Son, you want a hat? You want the, the bags of my goodies? <laughs> So just to give you kind of an overview of things, we're going to go into detail here. Um, experience, what is a resume, preparing to write it, resume content areas, design cover letters, employment applications, tips and resources. Um, the first thing, and this is something that I think I've already kind of hit on with you guys, experience is a must, right? From your sophomore year on, you really want to start making sure that your resume is reflecting experience and things that you've done that are going to apply to whatever it is that you want to do. Um, Later on in this PowerPoint presentation, there's also going to be a slide talking about, you can have different resumes for different jobs if you want it. If there's different things you're not sure what you want to do, maybe some of your experience plays better to a certain job, just depending on everything that you've done. So, for instance, if your experience is maybe working at McDonald's, that's customer service experience. If you're going to try to be an accountant, I don't know if flipping burgers at McDonald's is really applicable experience for that. So, you might even want to leave it off if an application asks for previous work history, you might want to list it on there. But you want to put on your resume things that are going to be stuff that a, a recruiter or a hiring manager, manager is going to look at and, again, build this pretty picture of this candidate. You want that picture to be as pretty as possible. Um, you know, unpaid internships, if you can do it, that's great. I think nowadays a lot of internships are paid. So unless you're in a really bigger city or area where the job market is extremely competitive, um, I think you're going to have a good time finding a paid internship. And obviously, that's what you want, right? Uh, I know the enterprise with certainly pay our interns. We offer different opportunities for bonuses and other ways to make more money. Um, so paid internships are out there. Guys, you just got to find them, kind of find that time you're scheduled to do them. So what is a resume? I think we all know what it is. Um, the single most important tool you need to start your career. Now, I think a lot of people know this at this point, but it's one page. Fit it all on one page. If it's two pages, get it on. So you really need to narrow down what you want on that resume, what's the most important, what's going to help you to get that job. Um, education, experience, skills, and accomplishments, and it gets you to interview so you can get the job. So some things to do to prepare. Take some time, do a self-assessment on paper, outline your skills and abilities, outline your work experience, and don't forget extracurricular activities. So, yes, I'm going to take my jacket off. Um, when it comes to extracurricular activities, you know, you guys are involved in a lot of things that um, are really going to help. It might not be work experience, maybe you're a college athlete. For some companies, we consider leadership experience in lieu of work experience. So with Enterprise, uh, if you look at our full-time management training position, uh, we put on our, our applications or our job postings that we either need sales, leadership, or um, customer service experience. So you may have never had a job, but if you were involved in fraternity, sorority, uh, college sports team, any sort of club on campus that you can provide to me an example of how this leadership experience, you qualify. So we want to know about that stuff. It also helps us to kind of gauge how much stuff can you handle at one time. What's the workload that you can really take in advantage? And that's more to talk about in your interview. Um, also, if you can fit it within this page, any awards, recognition, honors. I'd lie if I said I still don't have my all-conference honors on my resume to this day. Probably should take it off, but I'm proud of it. And I made sure I could fit it somewhere on there. So anything that lets us know you've had success in these prior um, experiences that you've had is great. Personal information, um, again, you want to think that a lot of this nowadays is common sense. Some of it isn't. Uh, a real pet peeve of mine is when I get onto someone's application and I see that their email address is, I could throw out a plenty, of just a plethora of silly emails that I've seen, but if you haven't done this already, either use your work, or I mean your school email, or go out and make one that's your first name, your last name, some array of numbers you can remember, and it's simple, it's professional. Um, <laughs> this is another one that kills me. If your cell phone's going to be on there, guys, don't. I mean, I've heard some voicemail boxes that are just absolutely out of this world. And, you know, try to have some sort of greeting on your voicemail. Hey, this is Jeff Green. Thanks for calling. I'll leave you a message to get back to you. Um, even at times, you know, just the standard one is, is better than anything, but don't have something silly in your voicemail box. Also, ringback tones, I think, are dead now. Don't have those either. 
And then, obviously, we don't need your high blade on your resume. Uh, that's just completely unnecessary. So, your objective. Again, this is what I said that I do. I read over this. I really enjoy this when uh, I see this, and it really pertains to the job that I have. So, some people will take the time on their resume to write their objective based on enterprise. So, it says, my goal is to get into a company with a lot of advancement opportunities where I can gain knowledge in customer service, sales, leadership, and management. Something along those lines. That's what we want to see, right? I challenge you to, anytime you submit your resume for a job, you do that. You get your objective to line up with what that employer offers in a career. Um, also, the type of position, type of organization. You know, I, I just the other day, um, somebody was kind enough to single me out. They found my email address on our enterprise website. And I love when people take initiative to get a hold of me that way. They email me, they say, I'm interested. I've applied, please take the time to review my application. This person's serious, they want this opportunity. I look at their resume and it says this individual is seeking a career in healthcare administration. That's not, that's not what enterprise is. We are a car rental company with a management training program on a business with several different business sectors you can branch off into. But he right off the bat just led me to believe he does want to work for enterprise, he just wants a year's worth of experience and he's out the door. Um, just another tip. When you're interviewing with employers, you need to be able to make sure that your career goals line up with what they offer. Again, but also, every employer wants someone who's committed to a career with that employer. So just as a kind of a sidetrack, um, you probably don't want to, within an interview process, tell an employer that, hey, you know, you guys are, are what this job that I really want here in a couple years, they told me to work for you for two years and get the experience and then I can leave. We don't want to hear that. Nobody wants to hear that. Again, some recruiters will write you off in and there. Me, because I'm young and I understand and I know what it's like to want that experience, I'll take that as a task to try to sell you on our opportunity. Other recruiters and other companies will hear that and you're done. That's the, the interview process is over. So just be sure that what you're looking for is what that employer offers. Um, and in terms of a cover letter, well, now that's just referring to the job. So here, some sample objectives. Trainee position in real estate property management with the opportunity to contribute strong financial skills and relevant experience. I like it. Administrative role in a public relations firm with the ability to move into a marketing position. Those are very clear. I know what that person wants to do and I know what they want to achieve in their career and I also know the lines of what we're going to offer. Education, um, degree, major, minors or concentrations, institute, graduation date. Love this. Only put your GPA on there if it's higher than 3.0. It's not a necessity. You don't have to know that. I can assure you that 99% of employers, if it's not on there and you're just going through the initial interview, they're probably not going to say, hey, what was your GPA? That might come up down the road, but I can tell you this, we're just trying to qualify candidates, get them in, make sure they're interested in the opportunity. If it's not on there, I'm probably not going to dig it out. It usually does have to be listed on your application, but if it's not something you're really proud of, probably don't put it on your resume. And any academic honors. Um, high school's a while back, guys. We're glad that you graduated. If you're currently in college, we would hope that you graduated high school. So we, don't, we don't need that. And list of any classes taken or taken. Work experience. Well, this is the this is the meat and potatoes of the resume. This is everything you've accomplished thus far in your career. So, title of your position, name of organization, location of company, date of employment, description of experience, and emphasis on specific skills and achievements. Three to five points to outline the accomplishments and acknowledge and gain. Use action words to describe your job duties. So, what does that mean? Now again, I tell you all this, all this stuff to be on this one sheet of paper, right? That's challenging at times. You really have to challenge yourself to the, the employment opportunities that you want to put on there, the experience that you're proud of that pertains to this job you're trying to get. Again, you need to figure out what things you're proudest of that are going to catch the eye of a recruiter or hiring manager, and then save the rest for the interview because you're going to have time to talk about it all. So you really need to challenge yourself to think about what was the most important stuff that you did with um, specific skills, interpersonal skills, teamwork, verbal communication, written communication, analytical skills, computer skills, leadership ability. Um, a lot of people in the resume will put the, like towards the bottom, just specific skills they, that they excel in. If you have the room to do it, that's great. Um, these are action words. So you were able, so let me, let me talk in terms of enterprise again, because what I've done for two years. If you were to look at my resume, which I probably should have brought a, a copy of to show you guys, but then again, you guys might have a better looking resume than I do. I just talk about it, look at them anymore. Um, I would put probably a few main things if I talk about my time as a branch manager enterprise. 
I achieved 30% growth over a span of 12 months as branch manager. I was able to motivate my team to be in the top 10% of our sales majors, all three of them for three straight months. So using words that are action words, again, um, for very specific, specific points of things that you're proud of that you've accomplished are really what we want to see. Show that you're a leader. Any leadership position you've held in professional organizations, athletics, student clubs, organizations, fraternities, or sororities, pilot community involvement or professional affiliations, include military experience. If you have it, please put military experience on when people love to see that. And awards and honors. Um, the city awards and honors you've received as well as any achievements in work or school includes dean list, dean's list honors, scholarships, and or honor society inductions. So again, this could be a different part of your resume. So if you have your personal information, your phone number, email address, address, then you've got your school, your work experience. If you've still got about, you know, maybe a fourth of your resume to play with, or maybe three eighths of your resume to play with, I would definitely try to fit in that extra section if you really have some awards and honors that you're proud of and that you want to share. Um, then also, I'm going to talk in a, here in a bit about some, some other ways to really kind of condense this information and get it on one page. Professional skills. So this goes back to a separate slide. Again, um, if you think that you're proficient in these areas, you can put them on the bottom of your resume. Guys, I'm going to be totally honest. I don't really look at that. I mean, it just doesn't mean anything to me if somebody says they're good at Microsoft Word. I hope so. If you've been in college, you've read a lot of essays that, you know, you should be. So, again, this is something that a lot of people include. I'm just not going to say it's make or break for me or a lot of other people that I've spoken to about resumes. Um, unless there are some courses you've taken or some things that you really think is going to make you stand out. And I have a reason to believe that you're extra proficient in Microsoft Excel or Microsoft Word. But if not, we were in college and then we had to write a million essays and do a million Excel spreadsheets, so just keep that in mind. References. So this doesn't need to be included in every resume you submit. Uh, some employers do require it after the fact. But if you do have references, it's a separate page. So this is not included in your one page of resume. Um, be sure to verify correct spelling of their name, current position and title, best phone number to reach them at. Do not include the references on your resume. So again, and, and that goes back to what I just said, you can put at the bottom of your resume references available upon request. It is good to have that sheet. It's good to have it made and it's good to have some quality references. Obviously with references, you want these people to know that they're references. So don't just put, you know, President Ed Welch as your reference on your resume because you shook his hand, you know, you go to his school. If you're going to listen to me as a reference, you need to get their permission because employers might reach out to them. And you don't want a surprise phone call. You want someone who's going to be an advocate for you, someone who's going to fight in your corner. So just be sure that uh, when you're thinking about these references, number one, do they know you? Can they say some good things about you? And number two, um, do they have a position that's going to warrant a lot of weight behind the words that they're going to say about you? So, for instance, you probably don't want to list your best friend uh, that works at Walmart sales department as a reference, you know, unless they have some sort of management title, something in their name that would lead us as an employer to believe he would have a very, I guess, meaningful opinion of this person, if that makes sense. So just kind of look at who you're actually listing as a reference. Resume design. All right. We're going to look at this, and then we're going to say some things that I excuse me, personally don't mind if it happens, but let's go over this. Use white or off-white 8 and a half to 11 inch paper. That's standard. Font size of 10 to 14 points. I don't know about that. Um, if, if you are having trouble and you are extremely proud of everything you've accomplished, you look at everything on your resume, and it's on the border. It's like a page and an eighth or a page and a fourth, and all of a sudden that 8 point font size fits it on the one sheet, I'm okay with that. You know, I, I, see the, I see what you're doing, I recognize the effort, you know what your resume needs to be, you know it needs to be a page, and you've taken an extra step to guarantee that it's a page. But you really need to be proud if you're going to have that much information, try to fit it on one page, or it really needs to all be stuff that you think is going to be worth my more than 30 seconds of reviewing your resume. So I guess if it gets to the point that you're trying to get it down to an eight point font size, challenge yourself to shrink it, but if you can honestly look at your resume and you think that you want the employer to know everything that you've got on there, it's not going to be the end of the world if you shrink it down a bit on one page to eight point. Uh, Non-decorative typefaces. Again, conservative is better in every aspect of a resume and in getting a job with your font, your dress, and everything you do. So Times New Roman. Um, maybe Arial is even a little too lovely for me. Times New Roman is a very safe bet. I really like if I see that. Um, 
avoid italic script, underlined words, do not use acronyms or abbreviations, present information in reverse chronological order. So, obviously the newest, the oldest. Um, choose a pattern of spacing and stick with it. Do not use horizontal or vertical lines, graphic pictures, or shading. Do not staple or fold your resume. Mail your resume, put it in a large envelope. So, here we are. This is what a resume should look like. It's pretty straightforward to the point. And you know, I know nowadays there are websites and resources out there that can really allow you, you know, they have all these different crazy looking formats and you know, some of them are cool and they will catch your eye, but again, it's not worth it. I mean, a lot of employers would rather you just have a very streamlined, very straightforward resume. Now, if it's one of those formats and it still kind of sticks to the other conservative guidelines, it just looks a little cooler, that's, that's okay, but don't go over the top. It's just not worth it, it's not necessary, and it's not what's gonna make or break you getting a job or getting an interview. So again, this person is very, very straightforward, name at the top, um, address, personal address, objective, education, then they have volunteer services with full work experience, it looks like. Um, those, you know, depending on the job, right? Depending on what you're trying to do, maybe your volunteer experience is a little more important than your work experience. I'd say for a lot of jobs, you should probably move work experience above, because if we're, as we're reading down, we wanna to get to what we need first. So again, every resume could be different depending on the job, but um, for this particular example, I probably would put work experience above that. And then leadership activities, and again, that's what you want. Cover letters. Explains you why you're interested in the position and why you are fit for the job. Describes the relevant skills and knowledge you have attained, for, attained and relates them to the position you're applying for. Writing a cover letter. Visit the company's website to review the job description for information about the organization. Personalize each cover letter with the appropriate business contact name. Don't ever assume contacts of male or female to find out. Just a general show of hands, how many of you guys have ever submitted a cover letter to a job or position you apply for? How long was your cover letter? Uh, anybody? Page? Would you say it was very personalized to that company, that job? Now, I will say this a lot of companies obviously do not ask, do not require a cover letter. Um, if you're serious about a job, write the cover letter. Do it. Take the time, make sure it's well written, have somebody proofread it. Because again, I am a firm believer that anybody that takes the time to do these little extra things that aren't required, that is sincere interest in this job, in this company, in this opportunity. And if, if I see that, if somebody has submitted a cover letter on one of their applications, guess what? That bias in my head is already there. I want this person in the office. I want to talk to them. They're serious about this position. And subconsciously, I might let a couple of other things slide within the interview process because I know that this person really wants this job. And sometimes that speaks volumes. So in my firm opinion, if you have the opportunity to do this, if you're applying for somewhere and it has you know, cover letter, not required, but here it is, take the time and do it if you really want that job. Now this is something that I really, really want to harp on, especially for enterprise. Um, when I first talk to a candidate, if I reach out to you, email me a phone, um, I'm really only supposed to, I, I can look at your resume, and again, all I'm doing at this point is forming my opinion of you ahead of the interview. When I talk to you on the phone, I can only review your application. Legally, that's, that's I think, just the way our, our structure is put together. So, your application obviously really needs to reflect your resume. When I look at these two things, they need to match. But you do need to spend a fair amount of time on these applications that you're filling out, because we aren't the only company that can really only refer to your application. So if we're calling you, some companies pre-screen, some companies just email you, say come in for an interview, it just depends. Um, I'm gonna call you first. I'm gonna call you and we're gonna go over your application. So as bad as I wanna say, you know, on your application looks like your most recent job was this, but on your resume it looks like you've been doing this. More recently, you know, I, I can't do that. I have to get you to tell me that. So I really want your application to be very accurate. And so take some time, make sure that the dates line up, that all the information you're providing is the information that if you get hired with a company, um, and we verify this information via background check, it's all gonna come through to us the same as it looks on your application. So another thing is a lot of companies too, everything is online. You submit your application online, you submit your resume online. Um, you really wanna make sure that if you've applied twice for a job, you go back through and you fix your application and reflect it as current. I know that's a big issue with us. We have a lot of people that maybe applied for an internship, did it for a couple semesters, then came on full-time years later. I pull up their application and their most recent job was in 2013. 
So you just need to make an extra effort to make sure that your applications are always current. Oh, and just a, a very good point. Again, don't put C resume. I want to, I'd love to, and if you get to an interview in my office, I will see your resume, we will review it. But again, that application needs to be the same thing I'm going to see on your resume in terms of work experience. Proofread, proofread, and proofread. Uh, if I look at your resume and I see things that are misspelled, um, that's not going to be good. Obviously, if it's your resume, this is what you're going to submit to an employer for serious opportunity. I think it goes, again, without saying, make sure that you're not the only set of eyes on that resume. You've got somebody else to proofread to look through it and make sure that everything looks good, your grammar's correct, everything's spelled right. Um, and again, it's the little things that can sometimes make or break. Should be neat, appealing, and unique. Visit Career Services for a final approval. I'd say you guys would love to help them um, review the resumes. And obviously, I'm going to get you my contact information at the end of this. And if you guys need any other questions or, or want any other answers or want me to look at it with you, I'll do that. I've got time. So just make sure you're reaching out to all of your resources because, again, this is your gateway to an interview with a potential job of your dreams. And so you can take it seriously. Um, these are all some websites, and again, if you guys, well, I should have put my actual contact information there, but if you have business cards, these are some websites that enterprises identified and really thinks are great resources for resumes. So I advise you guys all just for general tips um, to visit those websites. And again, if you guys can touch with me, I can get you whatever information you need. I'll also be following up with all of you via email after this, and so you'll have my contact information there too. Um, but again, being an alumni of this school, I want to do anything I can to help you guys, whether it be with us or with another company. I understand. No hard feelings and enterprises and, you know, what your career is going to be. But just judging or just coming from someone who was in this situation years ago, and unfortunately, unlike everyone in this room, I didn't seek the help that I should have. And so I was clueless coming into my semester, excuse me, my senior year. So I'd love to help in any way that I can, whether it be resumes, interviewing, whatever it is. So um, without further ado, I do. I want to open the floor to any questions you guys might have about any of the material I just presented. Yes? Um, okay, so when you're creating your work experience, um, how far back do you go? Because like, obviously you don't want to see everything you've done our whole life. And no, I mean, yeah. After high school, I'm like, what would you say is like a reasonable amount of time to go back? Well, I think the first question to ask yourself is, what is applicable? So depending on the job, you know, is your position in high school as a cashier or grocery store going to help you in whatever job you're applying for. So I think that's the first question you need to ask you. You need to ask yourself, I'm sorry. Um, and then after that, I'd say three to four years, depending on what stage you're in your career, really. So if I'm looking at applications, I have somebody fresh out of college, you know, and their only work experience is high school, you want to have some sort of work experience on there, right? Um, so it really just depends on where you're at in your career and with your work experience. Um, but I'd say two to three years at this stage is, is probably good, especially if you guys all in college and you're looking at internships. Just list what you got. Um, I'm sure, you know, depending on how much you bounced around, you probably only had two or three different jobs. So I'd probably go ahead and list those. If you're in the other realm where you have bounced around a lot, you've worked different summer jobs every summer, you work in different places in high school, I'd try to limit it to versus time, probably two to three jobs total. You pick the best jobs that you think are going to help you get that job. What else you guys got? A wealth of knowledge. Yes? Now you mentioned uh, you can have academic performances on the education. What if you have a different section that you play performance and awards? Why would you want to see that? Um, I like honors and awards. If I'm looking at a resume, it, it's almost personal preference. I'd love to see that stuff. I'd love to see the accomplishments this person's made. So I prefer it to be sooner on the resume versus later. So think that you have an extensive list of honors and awards, I put right in reputation. I mean, it's almost, you know, ranking these things on your resume so what you think is going to get you closer to this opportunity, right? So if you have an impressive academic background, you have a lot of honors and awards and things that, you know, maybe if it's a, an accounting position, you want to be an accounting student of the year, like, that's what I want to see. That, that means you're going to be great at this job. That's probably going to carry more weight than, again, some job you did in high school where you were waiting tables or something. So if you think it's going to get you closer to the opportunity, that's up to the end. So, yep. I need you guys to ask me questions because I gotta go to work after this. So something. Do you think of like including like graphics in the company and like maybe those are something for the top of the cover letters? I probably wouldn't. Uh, and 
honestly, I, you know, just in terms of keeping it simple and keeping it streamlined, probably went into the graphics. Um, on the cover letter, you know, uh, it's, it's personal preference. I wouldn't be mad if I saw it, but then again, in, in terms of sticking to what I said earlier, conservatives better. I don't think it's something that's necessary, um, but that depends on the company. Um, it's, again, I wouldn't hate to see it. If I saw a cover letter, it's probably just another step that this person is taking to ensure that they're putting themselves in the best situation. So I've never really thought of that, but um, it's not necessary, but I wouldn't mind seeing it. Yes? So you're saying you had an let's say I interviewed you, right. and you don't think the interview went well. Right. I'd love when I have people follow me. I, mean, I literally had a candidate the other day. I was on the fence about it. But you know what? They're going to go to the next one. I like that. That that pushed them over that hump. So I encourage to do that any given opportunity. Just a simple, simple email. Hey, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today. I'm really excited about the opportunity for your company. I really hope that if you viewed me as a candidate, you can see a successful in your organization. Something simple to show your appreciation and your sincere interest. I love it and I recommend it regardless of anything. Great for a particular group. So, yes, do that. Yes? One best and most competitive you've seen. The most focused by the most competitive. One of the best ones I've seen, and it's not rocket science, it's straight to the point. Um, but they had, and this was last week I saw this in, in preparation for this, I really said, you know, that's, that's what I want to see. Granted, I think Brain showed you guys it's probably some sort of confidentiality thing. But what they did well was within their work experience, they had very short, concise goals with numbers. Not goals, I'm sorry, but achievements with numbers. Again, so when I was for an enterprise, and, uh, I had a growth percentage in there. You know, they had numbers of where they are in their sales position they had previously, like number two for these months, number one for these months on our sales matrix. Um, and they, within three to four lines, ended up working experience. Not even with a section about honors and boards. Show me they had a lot of success in their previous position. So I love that. Uh, the rest of the resume was pretty much what you saw up there. It was all just straight to the point, uh, very conservative. But if I'm seeing a lot of what we would call like quantifiable um, achievements within your work experience, I love to see that. I did see a resume the other day that literally just had his name, email address, phone number, and then just said work experience, and just had a couple of sentences. I have no effort put into this resume. So for me, I understand that not everybody is going to be able to go through any comprehensive resume building courses. But when I just see a complete disregard for, for any, I mean, there's not, you didn't even have his education listed on there. It was literally just time frames of when he worked, no description of bullet points underneath there. It might have been three points of page one. That's bad. I mean, that shows me that this person might want a good job. They might like the thought of a good job. But how much effort have they really put themselves into preparing for getting any sort of Yes. said, enterprise handling seems different. If you apply and you qualify, I'm going to interview. You want to make sure we miss out on the building. So some other um, employers might not do that. They might not interview anybody. Again, this is getting you the interview. So I still don't know if I would. You might get a different opinion from somebody else. But I think if you put an award on there that's kind of uncertain, as long as within the title of that award we can draw some sort of comparison to what it might be about, I think that's going to be a great reason for any sort of recruiter or hiring manager to look at that and say, this guy's had a lot of awards. I'd love to know more about that. Probably do you go ahead and get him in for an interview because you know, I want to hear this guy's story. Let's see what that award was. It's impressive. So you, that, somebody might tell you a completely different answer, but that's fine. Anybody else? 
So you're saying if in 24 hours you guys all send me your resumes to apply for jobs with Enterprise, I'm going to be completely satisfied and know that everyone paid great attention here today. Sounds like a yes. One more thing I want to talk to you guys about briefly. Um, depending on what you want to do and what your ambitions are, we are hiring for our internship positions in Charleston both now and for the summer. So within our internship, it's a great opportunity to get experience in sales, leadership, management, and you're going to be exposed to the same job functions and duties as our management trainees. So you're not going to be getting coffee for the manager. You're not going to be doing a lot of grunt work. We're going to make sure that you're learning how to sell things. We're going to make sure you're learning how to manage and people. Um, we're going to teach you everything about our business. Uh, we do, unlike a lot of companies, we hire semester during the semester at any time as well as for the summer. So if any of you guys are interested in that, when I follow up with you guys via email, um, please reach back out to me. I'll tell you more about it when we schedule time to talk. Um, but we're always hiring. I know right now some of our Charleston offices are going to need some help. And we'd love to give you guys some experience and see maybe if this is a good career opportunity. All right, guys. I really appreciate y'all coming. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Jeff, for coming. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, give your surveys to Crystal as you exit. I think I think Jeff will probably stick around a couple minutes if you want to talk to him about Enterprise. Uh, it's a great, great place, great opportunity. So thanks, thanks for coming, everybody. Jeff, you guys have any questions? Now I'm here. It's the best time to talk to me. <laughs>